Hi everybody, my name is Todd Krieger. What I do is I help couples heal from crises such as infidelity. I'll be talking about to, that today. I also help couples rekindle passion and feel alive again together. And I also help people heal uh, from trauma, such as using my favorite technique of eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which helps people process trauma relatively quickly so that they could be free to live their life. Today, I'll be talking about infidelity and how it affects the betrayed person and what the betrayed person can do to heal. Uh, more specifically, I have found that betrayed people, they oftentimes feel like their life is, is lost. They feel depressed, obsessed. They end up feeling like their life has gone on a trajectory that is way different than it was before. And there are three main things that people who are betrayed, I feel, in my practice, what I've seen, go through. The first thing is they feel like, they feel totally lost. And they feel that life has become meaningless. And I've had one person, for example, who her identity, her meaning was in being a spouse and in having this intact family. And then you have this person who betrays. And it was, of course, the pain of the betrayal. But even beyond that, it was the pain of my life had that meaning. This is who I was. Now, who am I? And life doesn't make have any meaning. Now, for something like that, what I help people do in these situations, I help them see that, first of all, you can find your own meaning through that. I've had many people who have felt this way, and as time go has gone on, they found meaning in the healing itself. They've learned more about themselves and their partner. They've also recognized that they cannot define their identity only as a spouse or even as a partner or mother or father or whatever. And they have found that they relate to themselves in new ways and find that helping others, helping themselves can be very important. Um, having self-compassion, developing the kind of self-compassion they never really realized they needed, but they did. And so life will and does take on a meaning. And I, you know, when I'm helping these betrayed people, and as well as encouraging the betrayed people to help themselves, I really want them to have the faith that meaning will come again, and maybe not in the exact same way as it was before. And oftentimes it's a more broad way, as well as if they work out the relationship, they still have that, but there's more to them and there's more to their life. The second way I see betrayed people suffer is they, they feel inadequate. They feel inferior. The sense is that, wow, you were with somebody that has something that I don't have. And I have one person, for example, that I saw very recently who, every time her husband was a little annoyed with her about any little thing, she right away went to the thought in her mind, see, the other person, the other woman, the mistress, she wouldn't have said that. He likes her more. He wished he was still with her. He had decided not to uh, and to work on the marriage. But in her own mind, she was always coming up second according to the, uh, to the, uh, the uh, related to the other person. And here again, I say so many times that the person who betrayed you, the person who cheated, the person who deceived you, that was his or her choice. It really has nothing to do with you, zero to do with you. Now, can you learn from it? Can you see what might have been missing in the marriage if you don't work on it? That's fine. However, one of the things I have found that's meaningful related to the first thing I said is that you start to develop a certain appreciation for who you are and acceptance that maybe you didn't have before. Again, if you had your self-worth that was defined by how your partner treated you, now you can actually learn that you could have your self-worth depending on how you think of you. And you, of course, can choose to think of yourself in the best of ways or the worst of ways, I encourage the best of ways, of course. Uh, when, when a person starts to recognize that it's really not about them, that they can't, they weren't put in this world to meet all the needs of their partner. There's no way, nobody will meet all their needs of the partner. And that the partner made that choice for other reasons, not because of their own self-worth and deservability, 
then they start to feel good about themselves again. And you can. And uh, I've seen it happen over and over again. It's your opportunity. I'm not saying infidelity is a good thing. It's not. It's a bad thing. It's a hurtful thing. But it's it's your opportunity to develop your own self-worth from the inside out. The third way that I see really uh, makes betrayed people suffer is they start to judge their relationship. They feel it was a total farce. It's related to the first in a way about whole meaning. But in a way, it's like my relationship was a farce. My life has been a farce. And it can lead to a lots of regret and a, and a lot of despair. Regret, how could I, I shouldn't have married you, that kind of thing. They also right away assume, maybe, that their relationship is unsalvageable. Now, a person who was betrayed can choose to move on, and that's their choice, and that's fine. But that's not particularly true, nor is it particularly true that the relationship was a farce. It's just not that way. What I encourage, and what, we, what I encourage the betrayed people to think about, is that life is not perfect, and they are not perfect, and that partner is not perfect, and that in this relationship that had betrayal, there were good times, almost always. You'll find many good times. You'll find that you built a family, let's say, or you built a life, and there were some good times. Life is complex. We need to accept its complexity. We don't want to look at things in a black and white uh, term, good, bad. It's not like that. That's not life. And relationships are not like that either. So what we start to recognize is that the, that part of that, that part person who betrayed you was a real part. It was hidden from you, but it was there. It's not that whole person. The part of you that was betrayed, it, it wasn't there before, but now it's evoked. But you're more than all that. So you find that it's the opportunity to integrate these parts and to appreciate, maybe not wish that what didn't happen, but appreciate your partner's complexity, your complexity, the complexity of your relationship. And you can develop a, a, a deeper uh, love for your partner if you decide to stay or if you decide to split, you can still develop uh, at least a deeper acceptance for the imperfection of you and your partner and the relationship. Again, like I say, you start to learn, instead of thinking of it in terms of black and white, just moralistic terms, you appreciate the depth and the psychology of it. So I just wanted to talk about those three negative consequences of the betrayed partner and what you can do about it. I encourage you to click on the link and you get 10 steps to start healing from infidelity. Very useful, very useful uh, form that, will, uh, that you can read and take with you and prevent yourself from falling into the abyss of depression or self-deprecation. Thank you. This is Todd Krieger, making the world safe for love.